Welcome back to Morning Trade Live. It's time to go inside out on athleisure stocks after Nike's earnings. Joining me now here at the New York Stock Exchange is James Demert, founder and chief investment officer at Main Street Research. James joins me at the desk. Thanks so much for being here. So nice to be here, Caroline. So I want to talk about Nike's earnings. At first, when we were talking about this one yesterday, it was a mixed report, bottom line beat, top line miss. It looked like investors might be forgiving of that top line miss. We actually saw shares uh, move higher and after hours trading. Not the case today. We're seeing shares get absolutely crushed down more than 7% right now. What is it that you think is weighing most on shares? Uh, You know, a few things. Uh, It's sort of a bad triple play, if you will. First, they miss revenue, which was really unexpected. Uh, They canceled the investor day, which was not a good thing. And really what kills us, I think, on the stock is the lower guidance. You know, the the company's been troubled down 50% for the year. Um, Yes, they've got uh, Elliott Hill coming in to try to save the day, but I don't think it's enough. And that's why investors are selling the stock off here. So lowered guidance in the near term because they completely withdrew their full year guidance as well. Was that a surprise or is that kind of to be expected with a CEO transition happening? He hasn't even started yet. I think they can make logic out of it, but anytime you remove guidance in general, it's going to be a negative. It's going to cause investors to, to really fear the worst. Uh, you know, and their view of it is, hey, let's let uh, Hill get in here and restructure. Let's face it, he's not a turnaround guy. He was there when the company was at its best, really four years ago is when he left. Um, I'm not really sure he's the man for the job, but you know we'll see. The stock's still trading at 28 times earnings. It's not cheap, and boy, in a bull market of almost everything else, it's hard to even think about owning the stock. So you know, it's interesting because we did see this tick higher when Elliott Hill was an- announced. He hasn't actually even taken the reins yet. So would you say that the move higher that we've seen, which we're seeing uh, shares, you know, give up quite a bit of that down 7% today. Uh, would you say that wasn't warranted then? Yeah, I don't think it's warranted. I think uh, investors were looking for some hope and a change of leadership. Wow, uh, some hope in the short term. Uh, but in the end, I think we're looking at the New York Giants. It's you know, <laughs> a lot of bad things uh, lining up here. Stock's not cheap enough to be a real value turnaround play. So again, I'd, I'd stay away from it. And then I think the big question for Nike, too, is was this the, the kitchen sink quarter where they're getting all the bad stuff out? Or is there more bad news to come? Do you think Nike's out of the woods at this point? Or do you think that we're, we have to gear up for some more bad news, given, given the landscape? You know, I, I think the concern with Nike is the lack of innovation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and lack of, you know, the brand is pretty saturated. It's a very large company, which is hard to move and hard to change. And they've got competitors nipping at their heels, uh, which a whole new generation is much more interested in. Mm-hmm. So I think the, the problem is, is brand awareness, it's lack of innovation. I'm not sure Hill can turn this thing around, uh, but it's going to be interesting to watch. But I'd rather watch from the outside, not as a shareholder. Okay, yeah, they talked about early wins, but they said themselves a, a turnaround of this scale takes time. So not a buyer of Nike. Even despite the, the sell-off that we've seen this year, shares down almost 25% year-to-date. The issue is one of the biggest competitors on holdings, the, my sneaker brand of choice for the past several years, uh, shares are up or more than 80 percent year to date. They are down about one percent today. But uh, does that stock look more attractive to you? For all the right reasons. I mean, this is the New York Mets. I mean, here's a company innovating with 60 percent margins, right? A smaller company really can get up and grow, which it is. Trading at a pretty high valuation, 50 times earnings, but growing at a pace that might justify that number. I'm with you. Uh, It is a technologically advanced company. It's a lighter shoe. It's got cushioning. It's got all the stuff that as runners, right, we want to have in our shoes. And it's also got a cool brand that isn't, you know, um, and indeed is a Nike. It's newer. And I think it's, you know, it's a, it's a very appealing to the newer generations of runners. I can't claim to be a runner, but I, I have been wearing the shoes for quite some time, long before, uh, you know, most people knew what the brand was. So uh, I just have a weird shaped foot and they fit. So uh, that being said, so you would be a buyer of On at 48 48- $49 a share. Yeah, we think it's an exceptional company. And of course, it can be choppy in the short run. But longer term, this is a play you want to have in that space. What about Deckers, the, the maker of Hoka? If you're an on wearer, you're probably not buying Hoka shoes. But Deckers, Deckers are up, what, almost 40% year to date. Also lower today, down about 2%. 
what are your thoughts on this one? We buy the stock on weakness. You know, it's really interesting, can I? UGG and um, what's the other brand, uh, the the uh, the Hoka, Hoka. are ninety percent of their market. Mm -hmm. When you think of Deckers, you think of all those products, but that's ninety percent of their market. They've created UGG to really be seasonal through every season. There's a model that works. Uh, again, innovative at the Hoka shoe with the technology, uh, very good margins. Uh, again, this is the New York Mets again that you want to own, not the Nike or they say the Lululemon, let's say, uh, which are just saturated brands, too big to really to grow at this point. Okay, so that was going to be my my final talking point here, the Lululemons of the world here, because Lululemon. Shares are on sale. They're off about 50% year to date. We're not used to seeing Lululemon uh, items on sale, but the, the stock has certainly uh, you know, been in the red all year. What are your thoughts there? You think it's still oversaturated? You wouldn't buy on, on the weakness there? Yeah, Why not? I, I think there's some parallels between Nike and Lulu. You've got, you know, these were innovative companies in their early stages. They grew really fast. Now they're lacking innovation. The market's saturated. The newer generations want to go somewhere else. They're not as interested in the price point. Um, I think Lulu is facing some very similar headwinds that Nike is. And uh, as they continue, you know, the, they beat in their most recent mm -hmm. earnings, but just by a, a low margin by, and also a very lower bar uh, because they've disappointed so much. I think the stock is not something you really want to go after. Uh, it's not a brand that uh, the next, next generations really want. And it doesn't seem like the reason that you're not bullish on Nike and Lulu has anything to do with the consumer landscape because Hoka's and On's are very expensive as well. So what is your take on the overall consumer? Uh, we know they're under pressure, but they're still buying some sneakers. So, uh, so what is your take for, especially when you look at, you know, an On or a, a Decker's moving forward? Uh, can, can they count on a consumer that will continue to spend? You know, the consumer discretionary sector, we, we look at it very carefully, and it's been a minefield. You got mm -hmm. Nike in there, Disney, Lulu, all disasters. And then you've got, you know, these other companies that are rising up, Mercado Libra, Amazon, uh, the specific companies that we just talked about. So I think we think consumers uh, have got the wherewithal and will continue to as we're in a new business cycle mm -hmm. uh, to, to spend money, but they're going to be very discerning. They want innovation. They want new brands. They want companies that are forefront, uh, not maybe these legacy companies. All right. James Demert, thank you so much for My your pleasure. insights. It's great to have you here with us. That's James Demert, founder and chief investment officer at Main Street Research. All right, let's bring in Tom White to trade some of these names. Tom, let's start with Nike. Shares under pressure today. They're off only about, well, 8% now. I was, I was looking at the wrong line, so actually adding to the losses. Uh, James isn't interested in buying Nike and buying this dip that we've been seeing really all year. Uh, what are your thoughts? Walk us through an example trade for Nike. Yeah, with the stock pulling back here today, maybe it does give a lot of people some interest in this name, right? It's uh, one of the biggest global brand names out there. Got the new CEO that's going to come in. Now, they didn't give any guidance for fiscal year 25. That's a negative. And then they also pushed their investor day in November. Uh, so, you know, not surprising to see it down as revenue came in a little bit light. But a lot of people out there maybe want to be involved in this. So I looked at a strategy that takes advantage of a longer term view while getting paid to wait uh, on this type of strategy. So I looked at a, a simple covered call strategy where for every 100 shares of stock that you buy, you sell an out of the money call to the upside to create some yield. In this example, I looked at the October 18th monthly cycle that expires in 16 days and just sold the 85 strike uh, call against that uh, 100 shares of stock that you buy. So for every 100 shares of stock you buy, sell one out of the money call. You're paying roughly uh, about an 8170 debit on it. The debit you pay is going to be your risk. So by doing the covered call strategy as opposed to just buying the shares outright, uh, you get the shares at a discount, right? Because you're also collecting that 1.8% dividend yield that Nike has, and then you're creating yield on that out-of-the-money call that you have. And as we get closer to expiration over the next two and a half weeks, you'll be able to roll or adjust that short call on a week-to-week -week or month-to-month -month basis. You collect credits, you reduce that break-even, you increase potential profitability on this type of trade. It's one of those building box, blocks uh, type of strategies 
that we talk about. But if you want to get paid to wait, Nike, you think it might rebound, the new CEO might transform things, but maybe you have a longer outlook on it, covered call strategy might work in that environment. All right, appreciate that trade. And uh, you also have an example trade in Lululemon. Lulu shares also under pressure today off about, I call it two and a quarter percent. Uh, walk us through that trade. Yeah, declining sales in the Americas, and that's their bread and butter. Even though China sales uh, and uh, overseas increased over 30% last quarter, uh, we've seen a slowdown here domestically, and uh, that's where they make uh, most of their revenue at this point. So I looked at a strategy. It takes advantage of maybe a bounce, but maybe it just consolidates at these low levels. Stock's down nearly 50% so far this year, so you're getting it at a discount. So I looked out into the October 25th weekly cycle, uh, so about 23 days till expiration on this one, uh, just under a month, where I'm going to just sell an out-of-the-money put vertical, but I want to stay risk-defined in case something happens. You're not going to capture earnings with this one. Earnings comes later in November, uh, so you're safe there as far as event risk. So selling the 250 strike put in the October 25th weekly cycle, and then buying the 240 put, so a short neutral to bullish $10 wide put vertical, collecting roughly about a $2.50 credit. That's what you can make on it. Uh, but it takes your break even down to 247 and a half over the next three and a half weeks. That's about five and a half percent below the current share price. So in this type of strategy, you profit in three out of four scenarios, right? You got that higher probability of success. If the stock goes higher, you keep the credit. If it stays where it is, you keep the credit. And if it remains above that short 250 strike and that break even at 247.50, you're going to be profitable on this one over the next uh, three and a half weeks, Caroline. All right. Currently trading around 260.60 right now. Tom White, thanks so much.